in this video we will uh, look at the relation between multidimensional arrays and pointers and this is by far one of the trickiest topics in the entire course and uh, you can code uh, multidimensional arrays without actually understanding uh, the exact relation between multidimensional arrays and pointers, but uh, understanding this gives you a better grasp of how C treats multidimensional arrays. So, we will uh, now discuss how pointer arithmetic works with uh, two dimensional matrices, because as soon as we had uh, discussed one dimensional matrices, the next thing we did was we discussed 2 D matrices, uh, we, we discussed the relation between pointers and 1 D arrays. So, let us try to see what is the relation between pointers and 2 D arrays. Now, this is more complicated than it looks at first sight and you can do a lot of matrix computations by not understanding this, uh, except that understanding this gives you a better grasp of what is happening. We have seen that when you declare a 2 D array as a parameter to a function, then you, you should specify the number of columns, but not the number of rows. So, let us look at a function which uh, makes an identity matrix. An identity matrix is a matrix that has 1 along its diagonal and 0 everywhere else. So, we have void make identity 10 and it takes a matrix of size uh, double uh, and the number of columns is 10. Since uh, identity matrices are square matrices, this essentially says that the code will work for a 10 by 10 matrix. Then I have a for loop going from i equal to 0 to 10, a for loop going from for the columns going from j equal to 0 to 10 and the code just says that if I am at a diagonal element that is i equal to j, then m i j is 1 for all other elements it m i j is 0. Okay. So, this creates a matrix of size 10 by 10. Now, this is a very strange uh, code, because it uh, it is a function that essentially makes exactly one matrix. It would have been nice if uh, I would have a function that can create arbitrary size identity matrices. For example, if I wanted a 20 by 20 matrix, okay, uh, it looks like I have to write another function make identity 20 double m 20, right. The rows are unspecified, the number of columns is 20. Yeah, this is the standard way to do it, but there is a slightly more complicated way to actually accomplish a function which can take an arbitrary size. So, let us see how these things can be done by understanding how pointer arithmetic works with 2 D arrays. Okay. So, let us go back to how do we how do I address the i jth element in a 2 D array. Now, uh, we can view it as a 3 by 5 matrix of integers uh, something like this. Okay. Here, so, uh, it may be an array 0 1 2 3 4 that is row 0 and 5 6 7 8 9 that is row 1, 10 11 12 13 14 that is row 2. So, this is the matrix view which is 3 rows each with 5 columns this is the standard view, but internally C views this as a long linear array of size 15 in what is known as the row major form. So, let us just look at what, what it is. Internally C looks, as, uh, looks at the array in the following form, it is basically 0, 0 through 14 laid out in a single row. Okay. So, this is the row major view, it is called row major because first uh, all elements of row 0 will be laid out, then all elements of row 1 will be laid out and finally, all elements of the last row will be laid out, okay. but it is laid out as a linear way. Now, the natural question to ask is in that case uh, is a 2 D array really at the heart of it just a 1 D array. So, the difference between a 2 D array uh, seen in the row major viewpoint and an actual one dimensional array will come in the pointer arithmetic. Okay. So, as I just mentioned there are two views the matrix view and the row major view and both views are correct. Okay. 
So, if I have the matrix view mat is a pointer to the first uh, row. Uh, so, mat plus 1 will be a pointer to the second row okay. and mat plus 2 will be a pointer to the uh, third row. So, row number uh, 3 or row, row indexed with 2. In the row major viewpoint here is the difference. Uh, mat points to the first row uh, and mat plus 1 should point to the second row right. So, we cannot say that mat is pointing to the first element here and mat plus 1 should point to therefore, 1. No, that is not what happens it has to be consistent with the matrix view. So, the, mat, uh, the pointer arithmetic uh, mat plus 1 should point to the same element regardless of whether you are looking at it using the matrix viewpoint or whether you are looking at it using the row major viewpoint. Okay. So, mat plus 1 will still point to 5 and mat plus 2 will still point to 10. So, these two viewpoints are consistent. Now, here is the difference with one dimensional arrays. Okay. So, we have uh, just repeated the uh, viewpoints here the matrix viewpoint and the row major viewpoint. Now, had mat actually been a one dimensional array mat would point to the first element in the array therefore, mat plus 1 will should point to the second element in the array ok. That is not what happens it is actually the row major representation of a 2 D array and mat plus 1 should skip exactly 5 elements ok because that is the size of the column. So, mat plus 1 should skip 5 elements and go to the uh, element mat 1 0 ok. So, here is the gist of why you need to know the number of columns because uh, in the row major viewpoint I have to implement mat plus 1. So, I have I have to say how many elements should I skip in order to get to the first element of the second row ok. So, how and that number is exactly the number of columns in the array. So, the number of columns in the array is 5. So, from to get to mat plus from from mat I have to skip 5 elements. Similarly, to get to mat plus 2 from mat plus 1 I have to skip exactly 5 elements ok. So, this is the reason why uh, the number of columns is an important information because that tells me how many uh, in the row or in the row major representation how many elements do I have to skip in order to get to the correct entry in the second row or the third row ok. So, here is the pointer arithmetic for the row major representation and notice that this is considerably different from the uh, pointer arithmetic for a 1 D array. In a 1 D array array plus 1 will go here the first element of the array. Okay. Now, can you uh, try to guess what will be the type of mat? So, here are 4 candidates and let us go through them to see what is the most likely candidate and we will see this in greater detail. In star mat, mat is a pointer to int. Now, we have seen that that is approximately an array of integers and that is definitely incorrect because this is supposed to be a 2D array not an array of integers. Pointer to pointer to mat, ok we have not seen that so far and uh, ok uh, and that looks like a likely candidate. So, what about the third and the fourth? So, the third and the fourth looks confusingly uh, similar uh, what do they mean? So, here is a hint uh, the array indexing operator square brackets has higher precedence than star ok the dereferencing operator. So, in this case the first says that uh, so, what does this mean? Uh, the first declaration is actually int star mat 5 ok and the second declaration is int star mat 5 ok. So, what does this uh, say? Uh, so, let us compare it with the standard declaration like float array 5 ok. This means that array is ARR is an array of size 5 each entry of type float ok. Similarly, 
this means that matrix mat is an array of size 5 each entry being a pointer to integer right so it will be some matrix like this it has five elements okay and each of them is a pointer so here is the viewpoint for declaration 3 now what about declaration 4 so there, uh, let us see this. So let us compare it with a standard declaration like, um, let us take a standard declaration like uh, int arr 5. Okay. Again this says that arr is an integer array uh, of size 5. So it contains 5 elements each of type int. Okay. So correspondingly what this means is that star mat is an integer array. So, so here is an integer array containing 5 elements, okay. these are integers. Now this means that if you dereference mat, so mat is a pointer to an array of size 5. And this is exactly uh, the actual representation of a two dimensional array. So, notice the difference between these two representations. The first says that mat 5, uh, mat is an array of 5 entries and each entry is a pointer to an int. So, it looks like this. So, it is an array of 5 pointers to int. The last declaration says that star mat is an array of int of size 5. So, mat is a pointer to an array of integers of size 5. Okay, so, here is the difference and we will argue that the fourth definition is essentially what we want okay. and we will see this in greater detail. So, let us understand these type expressions in greater detail and we will see this uh, in the further video also, we will particularly pick on one representation here. So, we have argued that a 2 D array is similar to the last declaration here. I have eliminated the most obviously wrong declaration which is in star mat that is basically a one dimensional array. So, I have just eliminated that we will examine all the others. What I have just said is that a 2 D array is similar to the last declaration, but even the previous two declarations do make sense and there may be situations where you need to use such variables. Let us examine them in greater detail. So, let us look at the first one which is in star star mat uh, and it means all of the following equivalent ways. So, all of these are equivalent ways of looking at the same thing. Okay, you could say that a mat is of type in star star or you could say that mat is a pointer to a pointer to an int. Sin since arrays are pointers approximately. You could also say that mat is an array of pointers to int and this is also commonly called array of arrays. So, you have mat in star star. Now, this is a pointer to an array of integers. Okay. Now, every pointer to an int is essentially a pointer to an array you can look at it li like that. So, you can say that mat will point to an array of pointers and this array of pointers each of them may point to a uh, different array. Okay. So, you dereference mat once you will get a pointer to an integer and again you dereference again uh, once more you will get the actual array. Okay. So, what happens when I do mat plus 1 it will go to the second entry in the array of integers. Now, that may be a different array altogether. So, mat 0 0 is similar to star star mat this is just the way uh, address arithmetic works and both of them are addresses both of them are pointing to this location. Okay. Both of them mean the content of this location. Similarly, star 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 of star mat plus 1 is mat of 0 plus uh, mat of 0 1. Okay. So, 
in the case of one dimensional arrays we have just mentioned the uh, equation that array of i is the same as star of arr plus i and what we are saying here essentially is that mat ij is the same rule applied twice. So, I could say mat i is star of mat plus i ok. So, that will give me an array and then I need the jth element of that. So, I can again do star of star mat plus i plus j ok. So, this is these are two ways of looking at this array. So, mat plus 1 will be the next element in the pointer to integers ok and it is the same as uh, and when you dereference it you will get another array ok. So, in order to get the first element of this array I could say mat 1 0 or using the pointer notation I have star of star mat plus 1. So, these are the same ok and similarly for other elements of the array. So, one of the advantages of this kind of uh, in star star mat is that I have freedom in both dimensions. Uh, you can see these as the rows of a matrix and these as the columns of a matrix. If you see that uh, then uh, you can see that I have a lot of freedom here. Uh, first of all the number of rows is not limited because it is just in star star mat. Uh, I could have any number of rows here. Now, Another main advantage and the reason why this is somewhat popular is that the length of row 0 need not be the same as the length of row 1. Uh, these are just pointers to integers. So, the first pointer to integer may be pointing to a row of size 2, the second pointer may be pointing to a row of size 3 and so on. So, the row lengths need not be the same. So, think of an array where row 0 is 2, two elements long. Um, and row 1 is has 3 elements uh, in the row and so on. So, if you have extremely ragged arrays then in star star mat is a nice representation to pick.